Next question. I'll give you a hint. This is a hospitalized patient who uh, underwent a surgery recently. So this is a post-op patient. What are you seeing here? Okay. Everybody's seeing paralytic ileus. Paralytic ileus is used in context of small bowel and large bowel obstruction, right? Ileus, basically, lack of motility, a peristalsis. What do you see as predominantly dilated here? Yes. So can you see how it's essentially the large bubble which is dilated, the sigmoid colon which is dilated and there is air up till the rectum. So if it is essentially the colon, particularly the left-sided colon which is dilated, then what do you call colonic pseudo-obstruction in a, in a post-op patient, electrolyte deficiency? Correct. So this is Ogilvy syndrome. All right. So this is Ogilvy syndrome, colonic pseudo-obstruction and this happens happens usually in post-op patients, either the cause is opioids, right? Or you will see that there is, yeah, here the entire colon seems to be dilated. So sigmoid colon, large bowel, uh, you know, entire large bowel is dilated. But, you know, predominantly this will affect the left side. So colon will be dilated. And you can see the small bowel loops are all collapsed in the center, right? So this is opioids and electrolyte abnormalities, predominantly hypokalemia, right? So then when you see that it's colon, particularly elderly patients, this is Ogilvy syndrome. Okay, same pathophysiology for paralytic ileus as well. But in paralytic ileus, typically you will see small bowel and large bowel obstruction. Small bowel loops will also be dilated. So both of them are, you know, the same pathophysiology, same context. Um, this is more in elderly patients, whereas paralytic ileus is again uh, post-op. Okay, so cannot really distinguish. You have to see which bowel is dilated. If it's only large bowel, then call it Ogilvy. If it is both, then call it paralytic ileus. Okay.